Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video we will talk about how to play from behind when basically you're stuck in a portion of the map and can't really go out. In this game I was playing Amber Spirit, I had an anti major my team and he's obviously just trying to get less hits. Oracle is not an aggressive hero, it's just a defensive hero because of his spell, uh, Fells, Promise and Fates Edict so he doesn't really do that much offensively unless we're ahead which we won't be because I have an anti mage so we don't really be able to accomplish them up that much on the map. If you like this type of content, go to gamersclass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch master classes with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your rank games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. So let's keep ahead of it. Uh, another idea in this game would be that they have Bane, which is extremely good at catching people with Phoenix Grip. Whenever we're uh, split pushing, he can catch anti major and I believe he did like twice or three times in this game. Same as Clockwork, he's pretty good at catching people with, with uh, hook shot. Nyx dies to Clockwork, Mars dies to Clockwork, Oracle most likely dies to Clockwork, so we're forced to uh, just farm together, clumped up. As you can see, even though we're doing decently in lane, Win is 50 50, it doesn't really matter how much, uh, how far ahead we are. Because we won't be soon. Right now it's going decent for me. I have a favorable matchup in mid lane. Anti Mage is decently farmed also because he also has a favorable matchup. But afterward, we're not able to do that much. And that's when the game begins to uh, get a bit complicated. Right now it's only 9 kills, so not that much happened in the game up until this point. This is sort of the point when the game gets a bit complicated. Tiny has a blink. So he is able to get kills alone on the supports. Even though I begged him to buy uh, fluffy heads. This is a really important to do, a really important thing to do when playing support. Buy fluffy heads so you don't get nuked. Like this guy has 1000 HP. 900 HP, 1000 HP. They both die to Tiny and a rocket from Clockwork. Rocket Flare. Or even Tiny alone with uh, 3 grab. If he has a DD or anything like that, they just die in one spell. So it's really, really important that you don't get new. So when playing support, try to buy raindrops and fluffy heads. I usually buy two fluffy heads. It's uh, just so you don't get new. Especially since you usually have slots, as you can see on Oracle. He has two slots. Uh, he doesn't use them for anything. Same as Bane. I mean, same as Nyx Assassin as Dust and Observer Words. We don't really... They don't really use their slots efficiently because of that. So right now we're still winning. But then the game is going to take a turn. Antimage is 0, zero right now. Sort of when Antimage uh, is going to die, the game just changes everything. As you can see, they had like 60 something percent win probability. Even though Antimage is first and I'm second, we're not able to do anything. So Antimage is going to get caught at least twice or something like that. As you can see, he's dead once. Meanwhile, what do we do? I just try to make the best out of it. We're going to get a uh, gank on the opposite side, which is what you should be doing. Uh, what you're supposed to be doing when your position 1 carry is dying. Most likely you should just go and gank the opponent's position 1, which is usually on the opposite side of the map. And as you can see by how I played, this is really important what I'm doing right now. I'm just pushing a tower. I'm even taking tower hits and everything. I don't really care. I'm just baiting them to focus their attention on me because I have a fire remnant somewhere here uh, I don't know where it is actually however I know that I'm safe it doesn't matter what it is uh, yeah it doesn't matter what it is I'm still safe so this is why they're able to set up on this guy like Bristolback was not going there to help or anything he was busy here so my image is that what do I do afterwards oh here it was the uh, the fire remnant i meet is the most important part of the game if they can push me towards this as you can see i just go meet 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 again i push me i tank tower hits i go here then i first remnant it out i come meet again we need to push mid always since mid is the most important part of the map if the lane would be here pushed in our towers we wouldn't have any idea where the uh the enemy heroes are since this is also pushed in if you didn't have any vision, right, this word could get rewarded, and we don't have anywhere, don't have vision anywhere. So it's really important to push the mid wave so we get vision by scouting with the creeps, with the melee creeps, range creeps. 
since this is the shorter range sort of and is the middle of the map this is what controls the pace of the game so if i'm able to just push this wave over and over again anti-mage is going to get farmed enough or decent farm at least as as you can see they're jumping me here instead of someone else another support or whatever I have two uh, supports that so they know I can't really get saved by an oracle, anti mage doesn't really do anything, so they just are sort of forced to go on me, because if I kill this wave that's going to come in, they have no play afterwards, they simply have no play, anti mage is just going to be top again, two supports were dead, so they're sort of forced to go on me, and because I have this fire remnant I'm able to escape every single time, so this is what you're supposed to be doing if you have an escape hero else you should just be pushing side lanes if you don't have if you don't uh if you're not playing storm spirit queen of pain or something like that you should be pushing bottom lane exactly like this guy is doing on mars he's trying to push bottom lane he pushed the wave there anti is going top just try to split push until you feel like you're stronger than an opponent or have a, a timing by timing i mean for example a bkb on me i won't be dying in any way shape or form if i have a bkb the only thing that i'm worried about in this game is either pain creep which i have teammates to cancel at uh false promise on oracle nyx can cancel it with the stun this guy can also cancel it with spear which is a long range so uh, if i'm not getting grip they can only kill me by burning my mana with pl but i can deal with that also if i have a magic man which i do so because of that this is sort of what you're supposed to be doing. Just push the wave in, push the wave in always. Even though it doesn't look like we're that much behind. If they would kill anti-mage like twice or if I died once in this game, the game would most likely be close to over since we won't be able to do anything in this game because we will be losing the whole map. Every single part of the map is going to be lost if I die once, if this lane is not pushed. Just right now, what is happening right now? This guy got killed somewhere. I mean, I know where, but this guy is also dying because the wave did not push. Mars died here. Oracle is dying here, most likely. anti is just split pushing, which is exactly what he's supposed to be doing. See, they're just pushing down mid. They're just going mid, going mid. But if I were to, di to die, I wouldn't be able to stop this since I'm the only hero that has uh, range damage, sort of because of the sleight of fist and sitting chains. All of our other heroes in my team have to be close to uh, this lane. I mean, to the enemy still, they do damage. I can be further away, right? So this is really important to try to harass the opponents from far away. Another play would be, another good play would be to skip, skip the wave. Since they won't be able to take the tower through back the back door protection, one hero could have came like this, anti-mage most likely, come here, just tra drag the wave towards Roshan pit, and then just go back to farming top. Or another play would be, drag the creep wave here, and then just kill it and blink away, you know. Uh, but it's kind of dangerous, as I said, because of the fiend's creep. However, they're in vision right here, because of this word, so th that is exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Just creep script the wave here, drag the creep wave, and then delay their push. Because he's still going to be able to farm anything, right? This jungle is going to be up soon. He could be farming this also pretty safely since we have vision of four enemy zeros. Uh, in the case of the opponents, they should be taking rush kind of soon. Because PL is a decent rush hero. You don't really take that much damage because of the ultimate. You can tank the uh, Roshan with it. And also, Bristleback minus armor. So that's a lot of damage on Roshan that they could be doing to it. However... The anti mage didn't really creep skip the wave. I showed the opponent that I have vision there because I wanted them to place a sentry on the hero right there. As you can see right here, they just uh, go on me because my teammates are pretty good, so they're just sitting behind me and they know that they have to cancel it. That's why I'm actually positioning right here. As you can see, I'm in the furthest away point from the enemies. He's, this guy's under tower, you can just get stunned here. And I'm so far away from them that they can't really connect. They can't really do anything, as you can see. They're trying to help him, but I'm obviously okay. He didn't have to use any Oracle spells also. And then we can get some kills because they're uh, out of position, most likely. Or just back away. Either way is really good for us. As you can see, Antimage made some space stop by dying. So 
the opponents are most likely going to try and take Rosh right now. I mean, that's their play. So what I do while that is happening, push me there. Marsh push me there. I can't really go there because they... Um, I can't really take the wave. The wave was pushed, so the next wave is going to come in like 30 seconds. So it's really, it's really important that I get my farm. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You need to try to uh, get your farm, even though you're sort of stuck in the map. As you can, as you saw, for like 10 minutes we were just stuck here and pushing mid wave. Only anti mid was allowed to play on the map. We didn't really, we weren't really able to do anything. So it's sort of being less efficient. However, still getting your stuff. You sort of have to not die if you're getting uh, stuck in the bla in the base or in some part of the map where you can't really farm. So, exactly like what is happening now. anti is the only hero that's allowed to be on the map. I mean, besides me, but I have to be somewhere else. Because of the survivability of this hero. You know, Blink and that's about it. Blink and Cutter spell. But he still dies. As you saw, he died twice. And even though he's highest on the map, he should be... A lot a lot higher if he hadn't died twice so this is the moment when we could try to take a team fight like 5v5 because i have a bkb and i believe this is the moment where it's going to happen right now push the wave as i said right now their wave they can't come mid again as you can see they're bottom even though they're still lingering around me trying to do stuff here there is no wave so they can't damage this tower it's only half hp and they focus a lot of resources trying to take this tower which is wrong by the opponent. They should be taking this tower before the mid tower. So it's another important uh, part of the game that you guys should know. Uh, first you take mid tower, then you go bottom, take two towers, and then another mid tower. The offlane towers don't really matter that much. If they were to go bottom, if, or if they go to any way, uh, any lane, I meant, not any wave. Uh, if they went to any lane, we're just supposed to be pushing the opposite lanes. So, like they did, my teammates right here, they rotated the other side of the map. They pushed one wave in, one lane in. Bottom, we couldn't really, we weren't really able to do it. We have a word here, so we know that the opponents are here. So they're sort of controlling two lanes. But if they were to push bottom tower, as they are actually supposed to, we're able to push mid then and top. Because we know that we will have vision of them pushing bottom tower. Because of, you know, they're all melee heroes and hitting a tower. So we will be able to push this. And then we will be able to push mid lane also. And even sneak rush. Uh, I told my teammates, yo, if they're playing bottom later, in the later stage of the game. I told them, we can sneak rush if they're just playing bottom. Which is another play that you're sort of supposed to do if uh, in that case. So just try to push the opposite lanes that the opponents are not pushing because they're somewhere else and try to creep skip is super super important as you can see this team fight uh, right now felt pretty good to go in i mean even though one guy is that for me instantly oracle's out of position however we still have this guy's ult clockwork is sort of low hp and this guy's going to be forced to ult me right now which is exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to make him ult me because i'm going to be bkb then with flame guard so he's dying He's dead. So two people are dead instantly. Even though this guy was out of position, seems to be seemed to die. This guy was dead. I know that they were still able to fight him. Which is exactly what I do. anti mage is going to join the team fight though, so this is sort of an issue. I mean we got another kill instantly before anti mage joined. Like he has everything, he has an ultimate, he joined afterwards. He should be just pushing top. Which is really really important to do. Because even if you will win the team fight, he is going to take Rex. If you lose the team fight, he's still going to take the Rex unless the opponents are going to TP here. So this is why I say we need to be pushing the side lanes. If the opponents are not there, obviously. Because if they win a team fight here, they can't go Roche. Because anti mage is going to take the Rex. So they have to TP back here and then push this wave so they don't lose the Rex. And anti mage meanwhile can be pushing bottom while the opponents are top, or he could be taking Rosh, or this tower, he is free to do everything, or anything, if he just pressures this tower. Uh, however, I believe he's just going to die. I'm out of resources, I have zero mana, nothing, this guy doesn't have anything, and he just TPS in. Uh, and he's going to die, most likely. Just right clicking, the peel. Uh, Oracle died, I don't really have anything for him, he's 200 HP, I... 
no man, I just had to take an illusion run and then heal. However, it doesn't really do anything. So let's imagine, as I said before, if Antimage wouldn't have come here. Three people would still be dead. Three people on our side would be dead. But he would be pushing this tower in. The tower could be like 75% HP right now. Or even 90%, let's say. It doesn't really matter. The opponents are forced to go back right now. Instead of doing whatever they want. This guy is healthy. On principle, I can't take Rosh. If they want to go Rosh or anything. As you can see, my teammates are uh, getting tilted and stuff. They're pausing because Antimage is dead. He died three times right now. So, yeah. He's 0-3. Even though he had sort of a free game. So, as you can see, I don't go base to heal. I know three opponents are dead. I still have to pressure this. I have to pressure this tower as much as possible in this lane because someone is going to defend this only after I push the wave. As you can see, PL is forced to TP here. So he has zero mana, zero HP, so he is going to lose from minute 25 when he's TP. Let's see how much time PL loses. Wasted, I mean. Pushes this and then at least one minute until he's ready to fight again because he finishes hard. Else he would have been a lot more since he wouldn't have had the. Uh, uh strength i mean the hp region to be healthy for a fight right now so this guy is still pushing because he's in the thought process that oh three people are dead as you can see in our team pl was forced to go back because of me pushing this wave in if you know i didn't push it the wave would be here so pl wouldn't be forced to do it so they could be taking rosh or doing anything else so since three people are dead this guy feels comfortable to go and hit the tower which is the mistake right here since one guy is responding, two guys are responding, so we're able to kill this guy quickly. Now what do we need to do? Again, push waves, push waves. Bottom is not pushed, mid is not pushed. Only top is pushed because I pushed the wave in. Pushing wave is actually one of the most important parts of the game. It simply is. Good. Because if you're stuck in a part of the map, in your base or anything, you're not going to get any resources. The enemies are going to get the Roshan. The enemies are going to get the runes, which are really important, like a double damage. Imagine a Svent coming at you with a double damage every single two three minutes whatever whenever he gets a dd they can do a lot more plays same as a region run with store spirit arcane run with any like intelligence heroes so now i'm sort of i want to pressure this tower because even if we like kill a guy or whatever as you can see there's like almost 75 for opponents even though they're only 1000 gold ahead they control so much of the map a really important thing would be to try to push towers whenever you're you feel like you're stronger than an opponent when one guy is dead even though anti is top he won't really be joining us because he feels like he can't do anything these guys uh they missed messed up some spells right there but it doesn't really matter as you can see bane is not even defending he's just pushing waves so what we should be doing oh tiny just blinked out nice play we're still able to take this tower and get an arcane rune and then maybe try to take a fight in the future as you can see, I'm still lingering right here. My teammates are doing a bad play right now. I'm not going to lie. They're invading the enemy triangle when we can't really go here. They're, they missed, messed up their spells. Uh, we have no Vendetta. We have no Marcery now. And then they're still like... This guy's 400 HP. One guy's dead and I still try to go. I believe they're going to get caught more, maybe. Yeah, this guy's most likely dead. So, anti-mage... Is still pressuring top, which is exactly what we we're supposed to do. What am I doing? I'm pushing mid. I'm in the enemy, inside the enemy's tier 2. Because even though they're killing people and stuff like that, they have to deal with anti mage right now. See? And they have to deal with me, the mid lane. This guy has to TP top again. Which is really good for us. Because he won't be able to do anything but take Rosh, maybe. Or tier 1 top. And tier 1 top doesn't really matter. Four opponents mid are... They have no wave to push, so they only like can go Rosh, which is, yeah, it's still bad for us, but, you know, uh, it's not the end of the world. This guy's almost dead, right here. He was uh, careless. What am I doing meanwhile? I'm diverting, and then I'm probably going to push a wave in. Try to. Never mind, I don't, I don't have vision of the opponent. Yeah, they go on anti-mage. That's why I was scared, because I know my anti mage doesn't have a TP, so they're either hunting anti mage or setting up on mid or Roshan. But Bane still had a. Bane still had the ultimate, so it's really dangerous. Anti mage is dead again. So. Yeah, okay. They're watching on the enemies right now. <laughs> Another really important 
thing that you might want to consider is changing your item build to fit the game. In this game, usually after Maelstrom BKB on Amber, you will go for a negative scepter. However, it's not good in this game for me. I know it's not good because I'm not going to be able to do anything with Agony Scepter. I'm not going to be chasing the enemies. I can't kill a 3000 HP PL just like that. I can't kill a Bristol Bag that's 3000 HP with magic resistance and a lot of stuff. Like, I, I won't be able to deal any damage with Agony on Tiny with BKB. Obviously, you might say, oh, you can hold your remnants or whatever. No, I need to be a tank for a frontline for my team. This guy's 1.7 thousand HP. He has blink blades, so really nothing to be defensive. Antimage just died. He doesn't really have anything. Again, 1.7 thousand HP. He only has magic resistance because of this counter spell, which is, you know, okay. But PL is physical damage, Bristol back is physical damage. So what do I do? What do I change my build? I buy a plate mail because I need armor to tank tiny. Obviously, it has 300 damage. And PL, which is only physical damage. So this is the change with my PL that I did. And also Mjolnir, I bought Mjolnir. Because um, I needed more attack speed if I'm going to right click heroes more. It, as you can see right now, I'm just barely hitting creeps. Once every second. So I didn't need this hyperstone and Mjolnir. So I can be a frontline for my team. Especially the active on Mjolnir is really, really good in this game. Because of the PL and obviously the enemy have melee heroes. So... This is a change that you might uh, think about what can I buy or for example one change that in the ultimate that I like to do or sometimes done would be um, Halberd on range heroes. You don't really want to buy Halberd on range heroes but I sometimes buy it even on Evoker. I get Halberd on Evoker if I'm playing versus a TA or something like that so I really need the uh, uh, evasion and you know tankiness. Or even a plate mail, just casual plate mail. Or even a salt cross and invoker, stuff like that. Just try to think outside of the box. What do my team requires me to do? What do I need to do? So it's really, really important to try to uh, change the item build up. Also, if I had Agony Scepter in this team fight, nothing would have happened differently. Perhaps I would have even died. I was able to save my BKP because I had this type of build. So right now, we can't really do anything, we're still stuck in our side of the base. If we try to go over the river, my teammates are just dying, which is really, really bad. I believe they got confused by me going there, but that was my only play that I have to just push the wave in. My teammate is able to split push as usual, however, two of my teammates are dead. And now we're still stuck in the base again. The opponents have 75% uh, chance to win the game. So as you can see, this is kind of annoying, the PL illusions, but don't really matter. We're going to lose the Rex right here. Antimage split is still split pushing, which is really good for us, because might, yeah, Tiny is forced to go back. So now we might be able to catch the enemy's heroes, which is exactly why we're split pushing in the first place. Either they have to deal with the split push, or we just go and kill them right here. PL even though is super super tanky and stuff, Tiny cannot join the team fight because he TV. He might even die here. Not sure, but uh, he will probably die. And this is exactly where my build comes into play. As you can see, I go in, I'm only this guy, even though it doesn't really uh, turn. Just BKB and kill one guy. And I can tank for my team. See? Antimage is not here. If I would have an Angry Scepter without 10 armor, without this, this team fight would have looked so much differently. Even though it's still okay, but my teammates would have died or I would have died for sure. Tiny is that anti because of the anti-mage split pushing. And Clockwork also was forced to go back there to try and defend the Rex. Which they did, obviously, but anti mage just got a, uh, got a kill out of it. So it's really, really good. Afterwards, again, I changed my build to Shiva's. I mean, not really changed my build to Shiva's. This, Shiva's is actually really, really good on Ember Spirit, especially in this game. They're again taking a team fight outside of the base. We can't really do that because of the nature of the enemy heroes. Anti mage is just going to split push, which is okay for us. However, you know none of us can do anything. So this is the point when anti mage comes into play. This is why you're split pushing the whole game because you're going to get farm either way. If you don't join team fights, you will get farm, no matter what. So it's really important that he did that. My next build is going to be. 
uh, my next item is going to be most likely an Agonim Scepter because now at this stage of the game I am actually pretty strong or actually I might go for Kaya and Sanj Kaya is pretty good in this game because uh, of the status resistance as, any, as you can see I'm still pushing mid my wave is here my wave is here so there's nothing for me to get out of there just the wave and if we watch the opponents are going to drop me instead of someone else so this is really really important they're jumping me with four or five heroes everyone is basically here four heroes here they were ready to kill anyone that pushed me but because of this i was able to just bait them so now we most likely again this guy is just going on me i'm just placing myself in a position so that the opponents can make mistakes which is going on me because i'm very very tanky because of these items that i uh, i have also that's another thing i itemized my build so i can do damage and it can even be useful when being locked down either a clockwork hook or a lot of stuns or any stuns or this or slow down a bit i mean a lot by this guy vision s is good quill spray so i can still do stuff i can still be useful while being locked down as you can see right here i get tossed back but anti mage is i mean anti mage was able to get rid of the uh bane i'm still here doing a lot of damage to them as you can see they're like half HP just because of me. It's got 900 HP and I was alone there just because of the nature of the item build and what I'm able to achieve. They're slowed by Shivas, they're chained. PL is kind of low right now. My anti is going to be able to come back in the team fight. As you saw, he uh, blinked back. I mean, yeah, blinked out of the team fight. And I was just doing all the damage right there alone because he wasn't really there. But that's a lot of damage that I was able to deal. And then I could just. TP back and come back into the team fight, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So this is sort of the turning point. When we got 3,000 gold advantage, usually they had like 5,000 or something like that, especially after they got the Rex. And this is when we were able to turn the game around, sort of, I believe. Because the guy that was just farming is simply able to carry the game in the later stages of the game. Obviously, I'm still doing a lot of damage, especially, but, uh, you know, this is exactly what you're trying to do and how you're trying to play the game one guy is just afk split pushing one guy that can take uh can push the mid wave should just go there and push it every single time and maybe you can set up on the other lane with the other three heroes and maybe if you can join for example me with amber i might have been able to join like two ganks with fire remnant so we're just able to sort of get some kills right here but this is like about it, I guess. The game afterwards is very, very easy for us. Because I'm still super, super high up in farm. My anti mage is also getting a lot of farm right now. And because of the item build, yeah, you see, he's almost dying. But it's not really close. Without PL, they don't have enough damage. You know, this guy has a pressure and stuff. He has a butterfly, so he's not going to take any damage. He has a lot of armor. He's a pressure right now, so the factor of pain is sort of non-existent because he's able to cancel the feed grip without using ultimate he's able to blink on him like every single time so the next objective would be to try and close the game but for that we might need a roshan or something like that we're just able to split push a lot right now because i got my agony scepter and i'm able to uh do a lot more plays because of it i can just grip skip wave more efficiently because of the range at least so as you can see, even though we were ahead, and we still are ahead by 9,000 gold, we're still forced to play in our base. Why do I just push this wave in? Since one guy is dead, we have no wrecks, so wave is pushed here, anti mage is pretty pushed bottom. They just take the Roshan at the point. And the game, yeah, they had 75%. Now we're just dropping to like 50-50, as you can see. We had 75 and it's dropping towards 50. So it's still not over, but we have a great uh, chance of winning this game. Uh, it's a pretty good turnaround. It's just because of the small things that we applied. It's not something oh, Fireman Black Hole or Fireman Ravage. It's just about doing the little things, but that are really, really important. And we're going to manage to come back because of it. As you can see, another guy died in my team. This, but he was able to take the wave right there. I mean, that wasn't his plan. He just wanted to leap out, but uh, he got caught. 
However, because he pushed the wave there and we're pushing mid and we're pushing top, it's going to be pretty difficult for the opponents to push this since I just killed the creep. Now, don't have any wave, as you can see. The wave is very, very far. So, anti is going to be able to split push top and stuff. I mean, he's waiting for someone to try and kill Bane because, as you can see, Bane is also waiting for him with Fiend's creep. So, it's really important that he waits there instead of pushing him blindly. So I believe coming up is going to be the next team fight. I'm just going to uh, say what I was thinking in the team fight, but I believe it's just going to be pretty one-sided. Even though they have ages and stuff, this guy is just finishing the MKB because of the butterfly and anti mage, and anti mage is going to get the missile, and then I believe the last team fight is going to take place. Uh, right here, it just started. So I was thinking PL we took this is really important take fights when when you have vision so right here and also pay the opponents as you can see I'm going in first I'm able to escape obviously but then my Nyx is also giving vision there Bristleback we know where he is same as um, other heroes right here oh, my teammates are here obviously so we have vision of them because of the word which is a really important factor because we can um, initiate on who has to be initiated on so exactly this pain because he has a fiend's grip it's a 10 second duration stun or whatever if he just doesn't get interrupted so it's one for one right now we're just able to get a better jump this guy's getting kited he's alone right there we just got a kill and nick spot back it's obviously really good to try and fight close to your base so you can buy back and join the team fight very very easily. Again, I am placing myself in a very um, open space that I can try and get jumped because I know I won't die because of the item that I'm, I have. Even though Oracle misplayed and got uh, anti major that it's 100% HP, it doesn't really matter. I'm still able to survive and do a lot of damage right here. And, you know, a lot of stuff. Tiny just died, has no buyback, and yeah. This guy's 100% HP because of the uh, because of the Oracle ult and stuff. So yeah, I'm also okay. So we're able to chase them right here. They can't really retreat out of our base, which is another really important thing. That if you're able to win the team fight, you can just chase them until their base because they won't be able to get any help, any heal, or something like that. So again, we're just jumping bait, which is really important. It's because we're fighting close to our base, so we have this ver this vision, this vision right here. If we were to fight somewhere here or here, the opponents have vision there, I believe, if uh, the minimap is correct. So it's really important to take fights under vision, especially when the opponents have something like a Bane or Winter Wyvern that you need to uh, nuke, as they're just going to make someone useless or kill someone instantly in that team fight. So yeah, the game is over in this instance. They have nothing to do, so it's a pretty nice comeback. But it's all because of the small plays that we were able to do. Just push every single wave and stuff like that, instead of just um, just uh, one big play, I guess. Thank you for watching the video, guys. I've been IDQ. Have a nice day.